the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I wish to thank the director and his assistants who made this Mass possible for us all here to celebrate. And I want to greet all of you here with the greetings of Christ the Lord. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I am very glad to be here today. My name is Hilary Dachelem, the Bishop of Bauchi Diocese. Bauchi Diocese is located in the northeast of Nigeria. In the northeast of Nigeria is now famously known for the religious discrimination, feud, and chaos called Boko Haram. Here we are praying for the intentions of all of you along with those of our priests here, all of them have various intentions. The priests, some come from Canada, United States, and Ireland. I don't know all their names, <laughs> but I believe Our Lady knows all of them and their intentions. So we pray, and um, uh, we pray that the Lord will hear our prayers today and grant all our hearts uh, desires. And I thank Father Jude, one of those assisting here, working here with the rector in this shrine for making this, giving us this uh, opportunity too. We pray that Our Lady, who is presently here with us, will be with us, will answer all our prayers, and grant us our heart's desires. We are sinners in need of God's mercy. Let us pause a while and ask God for pardon and strength. I confess. Lord, 
May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Father, you have given us the mother of your son to be our mother also. Grant us that by obeying the appeals of the blessed Virgin Mary, we may always work through prayer and penance for the kingdom of heaven and attain eternal happiness. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Take yourselves, brothers, at the time when you were called. How many of you were wise in the ordinary sense of the word? How many were influential people or came from noble families? No, it was to shame the wise that God chose what is foolish by human reckoning and to shame what is strong that he chose what is weak by human reckoning. Those whom the world thinks common and contemptible are the ones that God has chosen, those who are nothing at all to show up those who are everything. The human race has nothing to boast about to God but you. God has made members of Christ Jesus, and by God's doing, he has become our wisdom and our virtue and our holiness and our freedom. As scripture says, if anyone wants to boast, let him boast about the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. God fills me with joy, alleluia. His holy presence is my robe, alleluia. My soul now glorify the Lord who is my Savior. Rejoice.
understand the great gospel. Alleluia. Happy the man who stands firm, for he has proved himself and will win the prize of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his apostles, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Fear him rather who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Can you not buy two sparrows for a penny? And yet not one falls to the ground without your father knowing. Why every hair on your head has been counted. So there is no need to be afraid. You are worth more than hundreds of sparrows. So if anyone declares himself for me in the presence of people, I will declare myself for, them, for him in the presence of my Father in heaven. But the one who disowns me in the presence of men, I will disown in the presence of my Father in heaven. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise My dear friends and fellow Christians and pilgrims from around the world, I join with Bishop Hillary and my fellow concelebrants from the United States, Nigeria, Canada and India in participating in this Mass in this act of worship, in this beautiful prayer, in this sacred place where Mary appeared just over 100 years ago. It's been 14 years since I was last back, since I was in Fatima last, and one of the things I notice about being back here again is how much the church is represented here in countries from all over the world. I see people here from Africa, from Asia, from the Middle East, from North and South America, and of course from all over Europe. And that's wonderful to see because the church is universal, the church is Catholic, and that is why we belong to it. Mary is the mother of Christ, but she's also mother of the church, the universal church, and therefore she, keep, she cares deeply with great maternal affection for our family. Before we came here to celebrate this Mass, we were speaking in the sacristy and Bishop Hillary was telling us about his experience of living as a Christian with his people in a place where your life is in danger and where your greatest crime is your faith in Christ. Where you take the risk of your safety and faith for your belief in Jesus, your practice of the sacraments, and your public witness to the gospel. From my brother Concelebrants, there is one of these priests here who has survived an assassination attempt in which six of his colleagues were not so lucky. <clears throat> It makes us realize that we are part of the suffering church, a part of the body of Christ who knows what it is like to participate in the cross of Jesus and to experience what Jesus prophesied, prophesied that we would know his suffer, suffering as he did. When I lived in Rome for a while, I knew a priest and lived with him at the Irish College from Iraq. His name was Father Rahid Ghani. And shortly before he died, Father Rahid visited Rome and he spoke at a Eucharistic Congress in Italy. And he said something quite remarkable to us there on that time, on that occasion. He said, for us Christians in Iraq, 
The terrorists take life, but the Eucharist gives it back. He said, the terrorists take life, but the Eucharist gives it back. He also described his experience of living in a Christian where there was a per consistent threat to his life and the life of his parishioners. He said, some days I get up filled with fear, but when I celebrate the Eucharist and hold the host in my hand, I have the assurance and the consolation that it is not I who is holding him, it is he who is holding me. So my dear friends, if we live in a country where it is safe to practice our Catholic Christianity, we give thanks. But this must not lead us into a complacency or an indifference towards our brothers and sisters who are living in countries where they are persecuted for their faith in Jesus. St. Paul reminds us that we live in a living church where all of us are members connected to one another in a powerful spiritual bond. So much so that if one member suffers, we all suffer with them. If one member of the church is honored, we are all honored with them. Being a Christian in the Catholic Church is not an individual or a private experience. It is being connected to the greatest worldwide, worldwide web of prayer and of the Holy Spirit. I am from Ireland, a place called Enniscorthy in County Wexford. And together with my colleague, Father Michael Byrne, we are here with a group of pilgrims from Enniscorthy, from the parishes of St. Aidan's and St. Senans. And we send them greetings to those who join us on the World Wide Web. We send them greetings and assure them of having remembered them in our prayers here in this past week. Tomorrow we will leave Fatima, but Fatima will not leave us. And I hope and pray that that will be your experience as well. That we come to this holy place, we leave this holy place, but the spirit of Fatima, which is the spirit of the gospel, we pray will not leave us. Maybe we haven't got all of the answers to our questions that we have come here with. Maybe there is an element of fear that we might experience as we prepare to return home. There is something tremendously secure and embracing and safe about being here. Isn't that true? It's wonderful to be here. But we know that like St. Peter on the top of Mount Tabor, we can't stay here forever. We must come down the mountain and we must return home. But our hope and our prayer is that when we do return home, that we may not be afraid and that we might return home with a greater spirit of trust in God. Mary was the one who trusted God always, even when it appeared that everything was falling apart and everything was ending in disaster with the death, murder and torture of her son and the end of the dream that seemed to die with him. But she continued to believe. She was there in the upper room leading the apostles in prayer. And then the spirit came and they left that upper room and everything changed. So our prayer here for you, for all of us, is that if and when we return home, be it tomorrow, the day after, or next week, or whatever, that we return home at peace, with the gift of peace that we have received from this holy place, from our Blessed Mother, but also that we be united with her in a deep sense of trust, in her son and trust in God. We pray for our own conversion and the conversion of sinners because when we hear that prayer of conversion of sinners, in our honesty we acknowledge that we are part of that group we pray for because we are sinners. 
We pray for our own conversion. And we pray that slowly we might come to resemble evermore the image and likeness of Jesus, her son. My dear friends, brothers and sisters in Christ from all over the world, from every continent who gather in this Eucharist, in this holy place, we join together as one family of faith, as brothers and sisters, particularly conscious and praying for our brothers and sisters who are suffering for their faith at this time, for our persecuted Christian brothers and sisters in Nigeria, in India, in Iraq, in Egypt, and wherever Christians suffer for their faith. May they feel God's strength and consolation because of the fruits of the Mass we celebrate here today. We thank Father for these inspiring words. Let us now stand up for the prayer of the faithful. For all the faithful. <laughs> Here at this sacred spot where the most holy virgin Mary appeared, let us present our prayers to God our Father who gives us the mother of his son to be our mother. For all the faithful, that by obeying, obeying the appeals of Mary in a spirit of true penance and prayer, that may work wholeheartedly for the renewal of the world and for the kingdom of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who exercise sacred ministry in the church, that they be, may be attentive in the to the word of God, love it and proclaim it with fidelity and enthusiasm as Mary did. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who govern nations, that they may work for justice and peace in the world and harmoniously collaborate in the just distribution of the earthly goods among all the inhabitants of the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all who suffer, that in union with Mary, Consoler of the afflicted in the loving care of others in the contemplation of the cross of Christ that may find courage to face life, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all of us here, present, and for our families, for all nations and for all our cities, that by the intercession of Mary, those who seek Christ may find him, sinners may be converted, Young people may open their hearts with enthusiasm to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord may we add other intentions in private, especially now to Father Steve, who prays for his bishop. Let us call on our mother, a loving mother, who not only was present here 100 years ago, but she's present here right now. Let us pray to her and ask her to intercede for her children gathered here. Hail Mary.
God of infinite goodness, attentive to the supplication of your people, and with the prayers of Mary, mother of your son, and mother of the church, to help us listen to our pleas and increase our faith. We ask this through Jesus Christ, your son, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brethren, that our sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we offer you these gifts of reparation and of praise, so that in celebrating this feast of the Blessed Virgin Mary, you may absolve us from our sins and guide our wavering hearts. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. As we celebrate the feast of the blessed Virgin Mary and to praise you and praise you for your gifts, she receiving your word in her immaculate heart merited, the, merited to conceive him in her virginal womb. And in giving birth to the creator of the world, she prepared the birth of the church she, in receiving at the foot of the cross the testament of divine charity, received all men as her children, both born to eternal life through the death of Christ. She, when the apostles were awaiting the coming of the Holy Spirit, the promised one, united her supplications to the prayers of the disciples and thus became the model of the suppliant church. She, 
then finally elevated to the glory of heaven surrounds her who surrounds with her maternal love the pilgrim church and lovingly directs their steps to the heavenly dwelling place until the glorious coming of the Lord. And so, with all the angels and saints, we proclaim your glory and join in the unending hymn of praise. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread in giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is the body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper is ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, our bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and our sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, our spouse, 
and with blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we are there to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave for you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the blood of Christ and the body of Christ keep us safe to eternal life.
Let us continue to pray. Lord, having received with joy these heavenly sacraments, grant us, we pray, that they may lead us to eternal life, where we may rejoice forever with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your Son and Mother of the Church. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jubilee prayer of consecration. Please, please may we kneel. Hail, Mother of the Lord. Virgin Mary, Queen of the Rosary, Fatima, blessed among all women, you are the image of the church dressed in Paschal light. You are the honor of our people. You are the triumph over the mark of evil. Prophecy of the merciful love of the Father, teacher of the Annunciation of the good news of the Son, sign of the burning fire of the Holy Spirit, Teach us the this valley of joys and sorrows, the eternal truths that the Father reveals to the little ones. Show us the strength of your mantle of protection. In your immaculate heart, be the refuge of sinners and the spirit to lead us to God. In unity with my brethren, in faith, hope, and love, I surrender myself to you. In unity with my brethren, through you, I consecrate myself to God, O Virgin of the Rosary of Fatima, and thus surrounded by the light that comes from your hands, I will give glory to the Lord forever and ever. Now we bless the religious objects that you have with you, the religious items. Heavenly Father, we ask you to bless these sacramentals through the intercession of our Blessed Mother, St. Francisco and Jacinta Martus, that they may be a sign of transformation, a sign of salvation for those who receive them and those who use them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, we must thank the director, thank his assistants, the security, and all those who are here. And above all, thank our blessed mother who we have come to have an experience with her. And thank all the priests who can celebrate it with me at this mass. As we all go, we wish ourselves a safe trip back home. And may the Blessed Mother accompany us all home. The Lord be with you. Amen. Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go forth in the peace of Christ.
Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you have the whole...